I have a kind of a, a, a personal question for him. Um, our, our content manager at Switch for Good, her, her mom is uh, overweight, has read Eat to Live, and has found it um, just she just hasn't been able to stick to the regimen, um, unfortunately, and, and kind of really has not been able to follow through. And I mean, we know that, it, it, you know, it's, it's a multi-layered approach when approaching someone who, you know, she potentially probably has an addictive nature to um, junk food, fast food, unhealthy food. Uh, how do you work with people who are just having such a hard time sticking? You know, obviously there's a psychological layer to this. Um, yeah, what would you what would you say to uh, Christine to help her? Some people need professional help, mm-hmm. and they need a lot of knowledge. You know, I wrote the book The End of Dieting to help people get over that addictive idea of food, but um, mm-hmm. but they have to abstain from their triggers for a long enough period of time so those addictions lessen. Some people can't dabble in healthy eating. Right. If they if they go into it 95%, it doesn't work because when they go a little bit to those foods, that suck them right back up into their overeating behaviors again. They need to have some sustained supervision, and we have counselors that give people supervision in my, you know that work for me. And I also, as you guys know, I have a retreat here in San Diego where people come and stay here for a few months. I had this place developed and built because of people with food addiction who couldn't follow a diet without some supervision and professional help. Mm -hmm. But it's not only the period of time of abstinence and and professional help. It's also changing their attitude about life and having, there's some training that has to go on for some of these people. Because when you're, when the more you're an addict, it makes you more self-consumed and more angry, more negative about life. It makes you more callous to other people. Think about the drug addict or cocaine addict who can like kill and steal and do anything to get to continue their cocaine habit. The same thing as food. People, their food, they're like, they're angry about their, their food. And they're angry people. But the point is, they're looking for the approval of other people. And when they're looking for the approval of other people, look, their, their self-esteem comes from the way people, and they're always being fought and being a difficult situation thinking people aren't looking at them well or considering them well or thinking at them or thinking about them unfavorably there's a lot of psychological baggage that goes along with food addiction that we have to undo Mm -hmm. with counseling and when people become mindful they become more creative they become more grateful for the food they become more they they're able to emote more and have more care and love for other people they're able to appreciate the beauty of the world around them more they become less competitive less looking for other people's approval to get their egos glorified and more satisfied with who they are as a person and their ability to like and care for others and they become more kind to other people and and actually feel good about themselves, their ability to have goodwill for others and not try to compete with them and best best them out. So I think that there's some um, professional help that people can have to quit smoking or to eat healthfully that people just need sometimes because their trajectory of what they've developed in their life is just too put placed them at too high of a burden, and it's kept them in a prison, so to speak, and the prison is keeping them from really being the happy, healthy, and emotionally happy person they have the right to be and they could have been. You know, I think th- what you're talking about in terms of really getting help with diet is is where it is now, is where therapy was 30 years ago or 20 years ago. People feel like they should do it on their own and they shouldn't ask for help and that if they do ask for help, it should just be from a book maybe, but not from a intense like going away to your retreat, for example, where people stay weeks or months seems too indulgent, even though health is the most important thing that we can give to ourselves and to others really our own good health because we're better people like you said yeah right you know and I, I do spend a lot of time writing and speaking about this issue so because I know from my you know career the last three decades a lot of people know learn about healthy eating and want to do it and they still fall back back and forth lose some weight gain back again they don't stick with it healthy so I've spent the last you know more than the last two decades trying to figure this out and put together people what to give these people and that's when my book you know my more recent books maybe take eat to live to a new, the end of dieting and, eat, and of yeah. course, eat for life, take a little um, higher level of, um, you know, of dedication of what I'm writing about to have people better adhere to it, recognizing that some people just require, have to see this and treat it as an addiction and, and totally abstain from those addictive triggers for a while if they're going to succeed at this. Yeah, that, um, I think that's what exactly what I'm going to um, suggest to Christine. You know, you have to okay. supervise her. Her family, her friends has to say, 
we're going to remove all possibility of you yeah. not eating these foods and you're from your environment. Okay. You have to stay with this. If you're going to conquer your cravings and really enjoy eating this, you've got to do it 100%. And we're going to make sure you do that. For the next six weeks, I want to see we're going to have no unhealthy food around you. We're going to keep you track of make sure you're doing this per perfect. And all of a sudden, her taste will change. She'll stop. Her cravings will go down. If you had a daughter who was a cocaine or heroin addict, I would like we keep her in our sight. We wouldn't even let her out of our sight because the tr we, we just yeah. want to make sure she can get rid of a cocaine habit. This food issue is really serious. It's killing people. Mm -hmm. And they can die, and they can die in a short period of time from their food addiction. It used to be, you know, they'll say, oh, I'll die 10 years from now, or die 50, 20 years from now. But now they could die a month from now if they get COVID, and they don't start to eat healthy and get their weight off. Right. They don't start to get down there. What we find is that even a person that's 100 pounds overweight, if they start dropping weight like three pounds a week or two pounds or a kilogram a week, even in a few weeks, we see their inflammatory markers go down. We see their risk of their diabetes gets so much better. Their high blood pressure starts to normalize. Their immune system markers start to normalize. We see tremendous improvement in immune function when a person starts to eat healthy and lose weight, even before they've lost all their excess weight. Just the fact that, so I always, I say a nutritarian is a person who's at an ideal weight eating a healthy diet or a person that's overweight but moving towards an ideal diet, um, excuse me, moving towards an ideal weight, losing at least two pounds a week. If they're overweight and not losing at least two pounds a week, they're not really on the program. Because, and, and the process of continuing to lose two pounds a week is gonna keep them in an immune protected state, whereas if they just stayed overweight, they would not be protected. Now, are they, um, are they, when you say they need to be losing weight, which is an indicator that they're getting healthier and eating healthier, is that because you, you believe that we need to eat just under our calorie burn for longevity and health, and so that's where you like to keep them? Or is it because the foods that are on this nutritarian diet, um, and pl whole plant-based foods, are lower calorie? It's all those things. You said either or. Um, it's, it's both. both those things. Right. So I just, say, big, uh, but, so but we can one, eat. I mean, I can, you know, you can eat. It's, it's hard to eat more than 400 calories at a time if you're eating a lot of healthy food. It occupies space in your stomach. You're eating peppers and cauliflower and beans and, and salad and vegetable soup with the fluid. And, and you, you know, it makes you feel full. It's hard to gain so much. What I'm saying is that also when you're eating a lot of raw vegetables and some of these foods, the, the calories are not all biologically accessible. Nuts and seeds, by, by the way, some of those calories turn down the apostat to make you satisfied, but all the calories, but the fat passes through into the toilet bowl, isn't all absorbed. Beans, you ratcheted down your apostat by 200 calories from that cup of beans. But some of those calories, a lot of them are resistant starch that pass through you and go into the toilet bowl. They don't even come into the bloodstream. So you're naturally caloric, moderately calorically restricting by what we're so, so agreeing with you that when you're eating all these high nutrient plants, it makes it difficult to consume so many calories because they're so filling and because these, the nutrients also turn down the apostat in the central nervous system. The fiber, the body forms butyrate from the fiber, mm -hmm. and the butyrate signals the apostat and the hypothalamus to tell you to eat less food. The bulk, the chewing action, all the activity it takes to chew, the time it takes to absorb, the speed of absorption, all these things naturally make you more comfortable eating less calories. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, and the other thing you're saying is true too, that the other thing that you said was true, that as you eat excess calories, it speeds up your metabolic rate. So if I was gonna eat 200 calories over my metabolic rate a day, it's 100 ca it's 365, 3,500 calories a pound. So that's, if I ate an extra 100 calories a day, I'd put an extra 10 pounds a year, 200 calories a day, an extra 20 pounds a year. No, I'm not gonna gain 20 pounds from the extra 200 calories, because as you take in excess calories, the body revs up its metabolic rate to try to burn them off. So I only gained 10 pounds the year, year not 20 pounds. But you, when you speed up your metabolic rate, you're aging faster, and you're speeding up the, the, burn, the loss of stem cells, the loss of telomeres. Your body can raise metabolic rate by increasing its respiratory quotient, and by raising its body temperature, or by revving up the thyroid, all biological systems that make you age faster. So you're paying a pack with the devil. When you undershoot your calories a little bit, I'm gonna go 100 calories less than my metabolic needs. I'm not gonna lose all that weight because my body will slow down a bit. Mm -hmm. It'll lower the body temperature. I'll be colder in the winter time. I'll need to wear the warmers in my hands when I'm going skiing and an extra maybe layer on this one. But, but, and my thyroid function may be a little lower and my mm -hmm. respiratory quotient will be lower. 
But that's the secret to the to aid, to slowing the aging process. And you also said, if you don't mind me objecting to that also term, you said you believe. Sorry, I sorry. also don't believe anything. Okay, you I'm skeptical yeah. of everything. <laughs> I I'm trying to do the best I can at, at in an in-depth review of all the science, looking at thousands of articles and seeing where the most evidence, where the preponderance of evidence lies, so people can make judgments based on. Um, the full degree of science, like a lot of people in the nutrition field, we use some short-term, double-binded, controlled studies to come up with a hypothesis and advise people on what to eat. And I'm saying, no, that's a hypothesis. We've got to, to really feel good, definitive, that we're giving people good advice. We have to take, make sure the long-term epidemiologic studies that, are, that have thousands of people looking at them, their health for decades that look at hard endpoints like death or heart attack or cancer, and see if they corroborate the short-term studies. They both are in agreement. If they're all not in agreement, we can't come to any conclusion. So I'm trying to come to the, come to giving people advice based on where there's the most evidence and the, and the studies are in agreement with each other to make the evidence of a higher degree of credence. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's cleared up why I can stay lean, because I eat at least three to 500 more calories than I probably need every day, single day. <laughs> So, but um, that's interesting, though. I just want to comment on the fact that most of us want to, we, when we read books or there's articles about losing weight and being healthy, they're all talking about how to rev up your metabolism. But what Dr. Furman's saying is, is that it's healthier to actually have a slower metabolism because you you age less slowly. I imagine that also goes with cancer will grow less slowly. That's right. There's no such thing as losing weight to rev up. It's the biggest scam. It's comic book information that people are trying to. Mm -hmm. It's just to sell people, you know, rev up your metabolism. You can eat, eat more food and not get fat. That's just nonsense. You know, there's no. You can't. You're not going to get away with eating more food and not getting fat. You're still going to gain weight, but the extra calories are what rev up your metabolism. But you're but you're paying a price for the devil. Mm -hmm.